this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to transition a face into the fiery superhero Human Torch. I'll be moving a bit faster in this tutorial for more advanced users. Open a photo of someone that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. As a side note, the flame filter that we'll be using later is available only in version CC 2014 and later. However, you can substitute it with flames from a photo of actual fire. For your convenience, I provided a photo of fire that you could use. Before we begin, if you're not already a subscriber to Blue Lightning TV, some mash that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. First, we'll make a copy of our subject so we always have the original intact. Press Ctrl or Command J. Next, we'll make a selection around our subject so we can separate it from its background. There are many ways to do this and I covered all of them in previous tutorials. Once you select your subject, click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. We'll make a new layer below it by Ctrl or Command clicking the new layer icon. We'll fill it with black, but before we do, check your foreground and background colors. If they aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since black is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Make the top layer active and make a new layer above it. In this layer, we'll create a fiery pattern that we'll use to cover our subject's skin. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. Go back to Filter, Render, and Difference Clouds. Repeat the last filter six or seven times by pressing Ctrl-Alt-F on Windows or Ctrl-Command-F on a Mac six or seven times. Each time the filter is repeated, it makes the pattern more complex. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Gradient Map. We want the Adjustment Layer to affect just our Clouds layer. However, since Adjustment Layers affect all the layers below them, we'll need to clip it or restrict it to the clouds. To do this, click the Clipping Mask icon or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. Click the Gradient Bar to open the Gradient Editor. Click the lower left Stop and the Color Box. In the hexadecimal field, type in 6A0202. Then click OK or press Enter or Return. Click below the bar to add another stop. For its location, type in 30%. Click the box and type in C, 2, and 4 zeros. Make another stop and for its location, type in 65%. Click the box and type in F, D, C, A, 3, C. Click the white stop and for its location, type in 80%. We'll convert our image into a smart object so we could add filters to it non-destructively. Shift-click the Clouds layer to make it active as well and click the icon at the upper right. Click Convert to Smart Object. Next, we'll make our subject into a displacement map which we'll use to wrap our fiery clouds around the contours of our subject. To do this, make the photo active and shift-click the black layer to make it active as well. Open the flyout list again and click Duplicate Layers. Open the Documents list, click New and type in Displacement Map. Notice it created a new document. Displacement maps have the best results when they are desaturated of all color and then blurred. To desaturate it, make the subject active and press Ctrl or Command Shift U. To blur it, go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. I'll blur it 3 pixels, but feel free to adjust the amount so your photo is blurred approximately this much. Go to File and Save As. Save it to your desktop as a PSD file and click Save. 
Now that we saved it, we can close the displacement file. Make the fiery pattern active and go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Make the horizontal and vertical scales 30 each, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels. Click the displacement file you saved earlier and click Open. Notice the fiery pattern is now warped to the tonal values of your subject. Make a copy of it and temporarily hide the copy. Make the original pattern active and change its blend mode to overlay. We'll mask out one side of the face, but before we do, let's save some space in the Layers panel by collapsing the Smart Filters. We'll make an inverted layer mask next to the active layer by Alt or Option clicking the Layer Mask icon. This hides or masks out the pattern. We'll reveal back the pattern on one side of the face by brushing in white over our subject. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. We'll adjust the size in a moment. Make its hardness 0% and the opacity and flow 100%. To adjust the size of your brush, make sure the caps lock key is off and press the left or right bracket key on your keyboard. Brush over the side of the face that you'd like to reveal back. To soften the transition, reduce its flow to approximately 30%. Flow allows you to build up color repeatedly. The more times you brush over something, the more color you're building up like a spray paint can or marker. If you want to hide the pattern, press X on your keyboard to invert the colors. Continue to brush over your subject, revealing and hiding the pattern until you're happy with it. Next, we'll make the fiery pattern more visible on the darker areas of our subject. Make the top layer visible and active. Change its blend mode to hard light. Make an inverted layer mask next to it. Brush over areas you want to make the pattern more visible. Next, we'll add a bright light in the eye. Make a new layer. Make sure the opacity and flow are 100%. Reduce the size of your brush approximately this much and brush over the eye. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. I'll blur it 7 pixels, but feel free to adjust this amount. Double click the top layer to open its layer style window. Click Outer Glow and the color box. In the hexadecimal field, type in F, F, B, 400. The blend mode is linear dodge and the opacity is 100%. The spread is 0% and the size is 75 pixels. The contour is linear and the range is 50%. Make a copy of it and drag it down one layer. Reduce its opacity to 50% and double-click Outer Glow of the copy to open it in the Layer Style window. Change the Blend Mode to Linear Light and change the color to a bright red. Make its size 120 pixels. Next, we'll make the mid-tones of our subject darker, but before we do, let's place the glowing eye layers into a folder. Shift-click the top layer to make it active as well, and press Ctrl or Command G. I'll name it I. Make your subject active and click the adjustment layer icon. Click Curves. Go to the middle of the diagonal line and drag it to the right approximately this much to darken the midtones. Next, we'll add visible heat emanating from our subject. Make the top layer active and make a copy of it. We'll jump this layer down by pressing Ctrl or Command and the left bracket key on the keyboard until it's below our subject. Change its blend mode to normal. Make the layer mask active and fill it with black. Press Ctrl or Command plus Delete to fill it with the background color. 
With your brush tool active, reduce its flow anywhere from 15 to 20 percent and brush over the edge of your subject with approximately this brush size. Reduce the size and brush over the edge again to reveal back more of the fiery pattern. Reduce the size even more and brush over the edge once again. Make the eye folder active and make a new layer above it. In this layer, we'll create our first flame. Let's create a folder to place all our flame layers into. Name the folder Flames and make the layer active. As I mentioned earlier, if you're using a version earlier than CC 2014, you won't see the flame filter. However, you can use the image of flames I provided to add flames onto your subject. I did a tutorial showing how to do this, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided its link as well. If you're using CC 2014 or later, we'll create the path of the flame using the pen tool. Click where you'd like the beginning of the flame to start and make a work path that the flame will follow. Go to Filter, Render, and Flame. There are six types of flames from which to choose. Have fun experimenting with all of them to see which ones you like the best. Play with their lengths, widths, and other parameters. In the Advanced tab, we can adjust its turbulence, jag, opacity, flame lines, and so much more. Feel free to mix and match to get the look of the flame you want. Then click OK. Change the Blend Mode to Linear Light. Hide the path by pressing Ctrl or Command H. Continue to add layers for each flame you make. Lastly, we'll make the skin glow brighter along the inside edge of the face. Let's close the flames folder to save some space. Make your subject active and make a copy of it. Make the layer mask of the copy active. Control or command click it to select its shape. Press Q to convert it into a quick mask and press B to open back your brush tool. Increase its size approximately this much and press X to invert your colors so black is your foreground color. The opacity and flow are both 100%. Brush over the other side of the face and reduce the brush's size the closer you get to the edge, leaving approximately this much empty along the side. Press Q again to revert the quick mask back into a selection. Make the layer mask active and drag it to the trash icon. If you see this message, click Delete. With the selection still active, click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Double click the subject to open the layer style window. Click Inner Glow and the color box. Type in F F E A 8 0. The blend mode is overlay and the opacity is 100%. The technique is softer, the source is edge, the choke is 1%, and the size is 50 pixels. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.